Hi, it's Kelly at Book and Paper Arts. And it's been over 15 months since I've been able to go to a flea market and buy books as nature intended. But I do have to say that in the last two weeks, I have been very, very lucky shopping online. And I thought that instead of a tutorial today, I would flip through some of these books, show you some old paper and engravings and printing, little eye candy. It will be dusty. So pull up a cup of tea and join me, won't you? First, I have this book called Castle's Book of Birds. And it is a beautiful thing. It does not have a date, which is weirdly common in old British books. But it, uh, I, I reckon it's 1870, just because I collect a lot of old bird guides. Let's see. Something I want to point out here is that these engravings are so stunning, and there's a story behind them. And that story is that this was in the days before you could print with this much color in, in bulk. So a publisher would have these drawings done with line drawings. Let's see if I can find another one. Just black and white line drawing, and then they would farm these out to artists who would then paint them by hand. Each color plate in this book was printed by hand, which takes my breath away. And look at that color. Even the black and white engravings are really, really impressive. And I will be scanning these and offering them as a free download in the future. So please subscribe to my newsletter and keep an eye out for that. Not quite as beautiful or colorful is a ledger that I bought. It has this amazing cover of watered silk on board. And then... The frontispiece pages are, as you can see, some pretty crazy marbling. Oops, no, it's upside down. This is an accounts book, and it is from 1903. It has the tabbed pages, and inside, the accounts are written in by hand. This is not the sexy uh, French calligraphy that I, I sometimes am lucky enough to find in ledgers, but it is very cool just to see how the ink looks and to even like eavesdrop and read a little bit about what people were buying. So here is another one that's very similar. This one is from 1922. Again, the watered silk. And again, some just luscious marbling. This one also has the handwritten. Oh, let's see. I thought I'd tell you what some of these things were. Uh, Swedish Spring Steel Brand. 120 dozen pairs of number 73 hinges. 10 tons of Swedish charcoal iron rough bars. Hey, what's that? So, I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. It is a lot of ledger. But I'll think of something. Okay, yesterday was a good day, and I got all of these and a few more in a box lot. And what I'm going to do is just kind of look at them a little bit and say stuff. This is um, Works by Racine. Even though it's distressed, I love this marble cover. 
and it is from 1817. Most of the books that I'm looking at today were actually done on a printing press, and you can feel, actually feel the raised lettering. This is really cool. Let's see, what is this one? This is from 1773, and it's uh, the story of Telmac, the son of Ulysses. And my husband, who is French-speaking, tells me that these stories are really well-known in France fables. And I really got lucky because these have the most incredible engravings. Let's see. Here's a... And from what I can see, these were actually serialized, like the one storybook. See, this is book 18. So all throughout, there'd be like a series, uh, a comic book kind of thing. And then in, at the end of the year, they would be bound together and sold like this. Oops, there he goes. And there's another engraving. Let's see. These are poems by Dryden from 1743. Again, the paper is exquisite, but what I really love here is the marbling and this beautiful ex libri. And more marbling. Here, let's see what is. Oh man, this is from 1825, and it's bust. But yeah, come on, come on, come on. It does have these super charming maths tables throughout, and I just love these things. They're not very. They're not intrinsically valuable. They're not, you know an antique or something that uh, somebody needs to study, but these look amazing if you put them in art journal pages and mixed media work. Someone has actually done a few calculations by hand, handwritten in there. Let's see, what are some of the math problems? Suppose one pound of pimento cost 10 D, what will 984 cost? What must I pay for 817 pounds of Spanish juice at one shilling per pound? What is Spanish juice? What? I have to know. If one pound of snuff costs three shillings, what will eight casks, each weighing one sea weight, cost? Casks of snuff. Let's see. This is so charming. Now, this does not have a date. I'm going to say it's from the turn of the 20th century. And it also has just these fantastic tables. And I'm thinking that I can take these out and alter them and then use these as like little tags to go in pockets of altered books and art journals. Now, this is really beautiful. This is, uh, it's bust, and it's been taped together. And this is from 1737. I'm sorry, 36. And it's tables for measuring with some very curious observations. Mm -hmm. It has this print, this engraving frontispiece that pulls out that uh, has pieces of wood. I'm not quite sure what that has to do with measuring. Again, you've got the tables. And this, this is really nice. It's got, someone has taken and hand cut all of these pages to make tabs so that they can see what's going on. And here as well, you see where someone's added these tabs and I know that they've been added because I have another edition of this book. And it is from um, 1821. So, ha, almost new. It also has the tables. 
but it doesn't have the tabs. So someone's ch 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 chipped all into those with the other one. And then it says 1821, it's uh, engraved. Let's see. This is from 1856. More tables. Again, I think that's why I got these because m not very many people <laughs> really are interested in pages like this, but I am. This book is very sound for its age. It's got the marbled covers, which are exquisite. And because it's so sound binding wise, I uh, might sell it or I might alter it and, and use it for that rather than tear it apart for the tables. And finally, let's see. Well, I did want to show something about this. This book is from 1865, and it's uh, fairy tales about uh, a genie. And it has some pretty cool engravings. Like That's an angel offering this guy a glass of wine. And a beautiful girl in this, this lovely dress, and pastoral scene, and there's the genie. And I hope you can see this, but this actually has the, the printing style of a certain time when the S's, Sierra, was shaped like F, Foxtrot, so that the word Sultan is spelled F-U-L-T-A-N rather than S-U-L. And so throughout, there are all these Fs in places of Ss. I hope that made sense. Finally, this one is really bust, but to me, it's the, the best one in the whole lot. It's from 1807. One, it is filled with these, let's see, I want to show you the frontispiece. It says... Antiquarian and topographical cabinet containing a series of elegant views of the most interesting objects of curiosity in Great Britain. Of course they are. Really, it's uh, engravings of churches and castles throughout. And these, I collect engravings, and these are some of the best I've ever seen. Remains of Connorsburg Castle, Yorkshire. Sorry. St. Peter's Church. I will be doing downloads of these. It's going to take me a long time to get to them, but they're coming. This is, uh, you know, another ruined abbey right here. And as you know, I really like using old architectural things like this in my art journals because um, if you smudge over them with charcoal, they look very much like you painted them yourself. Uh, the bad news is the bindings bust. The good news is the bindings bust because that gives me permission to take this book apart and play with it. Whereas if it was in pristine, perfectly bound condition, I would probably feel a little bit bad and hesitate. So I hope that you've enjoyed going through some of these old books as much as I do. They just give me joy. They give my day joy to just, just see them and look through them. If you like more book arts, please subscribe to my newsletter where monthly you will get lots of the free downloads and other things that are really fun. The link is in the text below. If you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, until next Friday, happy making.